Steve and you and Dre and a lot oh, of bro. Bay Area cats. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I, I want to give uh, props to you in case the viewers missed it. Like you say, you was able to write. Uh, you you co-wrote Trap with Tupac. One hundred percent. Yeah, he. Um, I actually I wrote it, and you know the famous story is I threw it away, and he pulled it out the garbage can. And he was like, why you throw this away? And I, I just thought it was kind of off topic from what I was trying to write, but it was how I was feeling. And you know what's in you got to come out of you. And he said, well, you know, let me let me do something with this. And I'm like, bet. And then he went in, wrote the rest of the song, and um, it became his first single. And it, and it was timely because it's something that we was all going through. You know, we all felt persecuted by the police. And, and I run. Ironically, all these years later, some damn near 30 years plus later, we still dealing with the same shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No doubt. And that's a that's a powerful record. That ain't just like no dance song or no, you know what I'm saying? Trap. Y'all really saying some deep stuff. And like you say, it's timeless. It's still relevant. A person could listen to that song right now and feel the same way that y'all felt when y'all put that together. A hundred percent. Let me see. Uh, man, you touched on a lot of stuff. Oh, okay. Now I wanted to ask you. Okay. Now, now Mac Dre, he came out with an album called Young Black Brother, but then it was a Young Black Brother label formed and, and Mac Maul was a part of that. All of that was in conjunction. Yeah. So first the label was Strictly Business Records. Um, and it was, you know, Kyrie, the producer. Um, it was Renal Powers. Um, and it was Rick Nelson. They got together and was putting out the Mac, and then they started putting out Matt Dre, and then they put out my my first record with Get Your Money On on it, and it became, you know, it, it, I was probably the first Bay Area artist um, to really break radio as an independent. You know what I mean? I had full rotation on both power stations, and it things took off from there. But... Um, not long after that, the label disbanded, and Kyrie named his new record label after Mac Dre's album "Young Black Brother," which was which was a song. It was like one of Dre's biggest street hits. You know, he was just talking to us, you know, about us, and um, so he wanted to base the label on that song. He thought it was a perfect representation of of what we were, who we were, and what we were going to talk about. And what we was going to dress. And then from that, he signed Mac Maul. Mac Maul, so called, his first album was one of the best rap album releases by an unknown artist that I've ever seen. To me, I put it up there with, with Snoop Doggy Style. Like, Doggy Style had more money put behind it and a lot better marketing. But everywhere we went with that record, we was out there in Cleveland, we was in Akron. We was in Cincinnati. We was in L.A. We was handing his red tape to, to Crips in L.A. And they was they was loving it. You feel me? And and it changed everybody. Like it changed my life, his life. You know, um, from from that record, Tupac came, directed my video for a song called Last Night, directed Mall video ghetto theme the same weekend. And if you watch you watch those two videos. That was like Thug Life and and the Bay Area and the Crest and and our L.A. folks all rolled into one. And a good portion of the brothers that's in those videos are no longer with us. You know, Pac, uh, my folks, Young Grin, Big Stretch from Thug Life, from Live Squad, from New York. Um, a lot of cats that was in it. Big Sight um, that are no longer with us. So... You know those those videos are a timepiece. It's it's a it's um it's something to really remind me every time I see them. From time to time, I still watch them, but they remind me of who we are, where we came from, and it keeps me grounded. You know, it it reminds me of why we're doing what we're doing. You know, it's not it's not just about money. It's not just a paper chase. It really is about um, you know, what's funny is the original idea before Thug Life that we had was for uh, the Underground Railroad. And it was a way to get our people out of the situations that we was born into. What America had planned for us, for us to circumvent that. 
So if you are, you know, a dope dealer, you could be the CEO. If you are, if you are a pimp or a prostitute, you got the mouthpiece, you could do a pitch. You know what I mean? You could, everything that, that was meant to be poison for us, we turned it into something good and something uh, that would change lives, right? So like the music itself is only one component of it. Really, it's about the mindset. It's about the motivation, the inspiration. Um, the work ethic, you know, like the work ethic we had then helped to create a whole generation of artists that's, you know, Pac for five songs a day. Mac Dre, when, when he went to jail for a crime he didn't commit, he came home, he wasn't bitter. He went to the studio every day. He, he probably recorded sometimes two and three times a day, every single day. And he did a, a show every weekend. You see what I'm saying? Like, there was no, we never allowed ourselves to fall into excuses, making excuses. As we used to say, excuses only satisfy yourself, right? It don't change shit. So, so that, I keep that work ethic today with all the other stuff that I'm, I'm doing. Like, I still work like, you know, like when I was young in the studio, same energy, same motivation. Wow, wow, man. You dropping some gems on them, man. 